Hi, welcome back to the Refactor channel. My name is John, and I'm glad you could make it back for part two of the SV Boney eyepiece review. In the first part, we compared the gold line of their eyepieces versus the red line of their eyepieces. Now, uh, an issue that came up in the first video had to do with the red ones, and that's what this part of the review is going to focus on. I found that when I took the red eyepiece and I put it into my Barlow lens that has a tightening ring, I guess they're called a Cooper ring, and I tighten it down, they're still very, very loose. And in fact, I had somebody tell me since the first part of the review that uh, they had a problem with these red ones in their binocular viewer. I'm not sure which model it was. This particular Barlow is the Celestron XL LX2X, and it has the tightening ring. Now, if I take these red eyepieces and I put them in a, another Barlow that just has a tightening screw, it doesn't have the problem. So the problem has to do with this eyepiece and whatever these rings are, how they fit. So we're going to investigate this and see if we can come up with a cheap and easy solution. Uh, and cheap, hopefully, it's a free solution. We'll find out. We'll start with the cheapest and go to the more in-depth possible solution. So let's investigate. So here's a demonstration of the problem. We put the eyepiece in there, tighten it down, and it just, it just wobbles and it pops out. They all do this to some varying degree, and only the red ones do this. See, it pops out pretty far. The gold lines, of course, didn't do this. Look at that. Solid as a rock. So this video is about the red lines. One thing to keep in mind is that these aren't the only eyepieces in the world that have these little skinny regions. Okay? Here's one. This is a Meoptics. It also has a skinny region. Put that in there. And it doesn't wobble at all. It's, it's very tight. So what is the difference between this other brand and the red version? And we're going to take a closer look at the base of the barrels, and I think you'll see what the problem is. So I've, I've basically unscrewed the barrel base from the bottom of each of the eyepieces. This one over here doesn't give us any problems. This one here gives us problems in the bar lens with the Cooper ring. If you look very close, look at the comparison between the thickness of this upper part and the upper part over here. You can see that the thickness on the red one is slightly skinnier. Now, I measured this, and there's about a 20 thousandths difference between these two. We could remedy this, of course, by making sure that when we tighten the red one down, it actually stays out away from the eyepiece an additional 20 thousandths. So that would mean putting some kind of spacer in there. There are a couple ways to do that. My first is one of the cheapest ways to go about it. Let's try that. If you own a Dobsonian telescope, then you're already familiar with the wonderful capabilities that you can get from a free milk jug. Make sure you wash the milk jug first. So this plastic here, it's a polyethylene plastic. It has some flat portions on it, and we can cut these out and use them as spacers. So here's a flat portion. I actually have a bunch of these laying around because I'm always using them as spacers and washers and that kind of thing. So I'm going to attempt to make the necessary washer from this. Okay, so we're going to take this piece of milk jug plastic, which is about, it's about 16,000 thick. That might be enough to do the trick. And we'll draw an outline on it. Now, this is going to be a very thin washer. I don't have a black Sharpie, unfortunately. I'll wash that off with some rubbing alcohol here in a second. But, let's see if we can cut this out. That's not all that uniform, unfortunately. Um, see if we can cut out most of this. All right, now if you're a precision cutter, um, you might be able to do a better job than me. <laughs> yeah, this one's not going to work for me. I'm not a very good precision cutter. And that washer has to be so small and so precise because it, it can't be wider 
than this barrel. And look how thin that is. So you have to cut an extremely thin barrel. It can't be wider than this. Let's try method number two. Next up is a possible solution that I borrowed from the plumbing industry, and that is it's Teflon tape. I'll see if we can string some of this around the threads to make a spacer. Uh, it'll be hard to make an exact spacer. We'll see. I'll twist it into a rope and see if we can do something with that. So let's try method number two. We're going to take some Teflon tape. Let's start with about, oh, eight inches. I'm going to twist it into a kind of rope. There's a storm raging outside, so if you hear thunder, that's what that sound is. It's not, uh, not hunger pains or anything. All right, so I'm going to have to wrap this around, and I always have to remember... No, I guess that's right. I always get this wrong. So... Just wrap this around like that. This is the best guess. <laughs> it's already starting to fail. A little bit sticking out. Let's go ahead and cut those. There is a gap. Let's see if it makes a difference. Wow, that's actually pretty tight. So the Teflon has proven that it works, but boy, it looks terrible and it's starting to shred. Let's try option number three. Oops, look at that. There's one right there. We don't want that. Oof. Let's get that out of the barlow. Yeah, Teflon. Teflon's no bueno. Okay, so we found out that the milk jug spacer didn't really work that well, and the Teflon tape sort of worked, but it was hard to make it just right. It would be great if we could actually make washers that were exactly the dimensions that we need, basically that 20 thousandths of an inch thick, and have a diameter that's not wider than the inch and a quarter barrel, but wider than the threads. Uh, those would be very small washers, probably impossible to buy from a company, but you know what? we could try to make them with a 3D printer. What a great use of the 3D printer. These washers were pretty basic and that's fortunate because my CAD skills are pretty basic. What you see here are the three washers that are identical and then there are two that are slightly different. Those, that's because three of the eyepieces have exactly the same type of barrel and then there's a fourth one that has one that requires either the uh, super skinny washer or the one next to it. In the final file that you can have, there are actually four washers. As with all things with 3D printing, in order to make it look super exciting, you gotta run it at high speed. And that's what we're doing here. Um, I am still fine tuning this printer. As you can see I don't have the initial uh, Z height quite uh, perfected on it, but it gets the job done doing these washers. Uh, this is an early prototype version, but again, um, you can see here there's actually three that are identical and two that are slightly different. That's because the fourth uh, eyepiece has a special need for uh, a super skin washer. And there's another ultimate method that I, I ultimately don't think I'm going to use. Okay, so here is the final test. Now, these three are the same, and that's because the male threads are coming out of the, uh, the telescope main body, and on the 20 millimeter, it's the opposite. The threads are actually on the barrel, but the barrel still has that problem with the short lip on top. So let's go ahead and let's start with the six millimeter. So I'm just gonna take the six millimeter, and I'm gonna take this washer, Put it on there. See if I can squeeze it down. It's a bit of a tight fit. Not too bad though. Or the main thing is you don't want it sticking out past the outside. Oh, 
Okay, that's on there now. So let's take the little Barlow portion. You can just barely see the blue spacer there. Let's give it the test. Here it goes. Tighten it. Oh, look at that. That is not going anywhere. That's a nice tight fit. Let's try the other ones. Here's the nine millimeter. All right. You can just barely see it sticking out. Let's give it a try. Oh, look at that. Very solid. Okay, I'm this is I think this is going to be the winner. The 3D printed is going to be the winner. So let's take the 15. It's the last of the ones that has the male thread coming out of the main body. Give it a try. Look at that. Solid as a rock. All right. This one is a little bit trickier. This tiny itty bitty washer has to go around these threads because there is not much room. There is not much space there. Let's see if we can get it down onto that lip. Let's see, I might have to kind of almost. Yep, there it's down there. Okay. So let's put it in. This is the 20 millimeter. Make sure the red ring is all the way up as well. All right, you can see the you can see it just barely. There's the test. All right, solid as a rock. So the 3D printer method wins. Awesome. Okay, it's officially time to modify my final thoughts from the previous review, part one. So what do we have here? Basically, if you go ahead and you print the spacers and you put them in the red eye pieces, then it really doesn't matter which one you pick. It comes down to personal preference. If you like the rubber grips and you like this uh, narrow band here, then go ahead and get the red line eye piece. If you don't really care about the rubber grips and you like the tapered barrel, then go ahead and get the gold eye pieces. So again, it comes down to personal preference now. There's really only a $10 difference here. Okay, so I've uploaded the 3D STL file that you use to make these washers to Thingiverse. There's a link down below in the description box. One note though, when you're printing it, make sure you're printing on the highest resolution possible uh, because the tolerances on these are pretty tight. And they're so small that even on high tolerance, the printing took maybe, what, four or five minutes. So. It's definitely worth the time, and they came out really well. If you like what you've seen, then please push the like and subscribe button. And now there's a little bell you can push that will give you a notification when a new video comes out. I'm trying to make them more and more often now that I've actually I bought a, a used camera to help with that process. So with that said, enjoy whichever eyepiece you get, and clear skies, everybody.